Ladies and gentlemen, today I present to you UFC's Frank the Crank Camacho. How you doing, brother? Good. Very good. Thanks for having me on the show, guys. Right on. Yeah, game on sports podcast for everyone. Uh, this is Danny Miami, and uh, you know, a big fight fan here. And uh, man, I had so much fun this week because I have a UFC fight pass. So what I did when I found out you were game, I was like, oh man, I'm going to go relive all his fights now because we've watched them before, dude. But you know, I watch hundreds. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you're crazy. And that's the first thing I got to say is, is you're crazy and we love it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Dude, uh, so yeah, man, first things first, I got to say three, at least that I know of, you have three fight of the nights uh, performances and, and I would say you deserve more. Uh, you're a warrior in there and, and uh, you know, it's just, it's just so, I got to tell you, it's so motivating as, as a fight fan to see that I'm, all I do is jujitsu, man. I, I'm a blue belt. I started pretty much yesterday, um, about two, three years ago. What a time to start, too, man. You know, like, dude, the whole COVID hitting and it's like, oh, I can't really train. You're just kind of getting into it. You know, you're starting to learn transitions. But all good, bro. Don't worry, man. The It'll, it'll, it'll get better. But, yeah, man, I appreciate it, dude. Uh, it's kind of, um, yeah, my, my first few fights in the UFC. I mean, shit, all my fights in the UFC have just been, they've been, uh, they've been fun, you know. They've been fun. I've been really blessed with, like, really good opponents and really good matchups. Tough matchups, you know what I mean? That's why you're crazy. That's it's all gonna boil down to, and I and I mean that in a, in a in a really positive way. You know, like crazy, like you you don't stop at anything. You know, you really are. I'm I'm gonna go after whatever they put in front of me, kind of mentality, and that's what we love to see. Um, I might Thanks, have, man. So, like, just to start off, I mean, uh, first of all, that the performance you had, um, not the last one, because I mean, you had you had Darius last, and he is an amazing grappler. Uh, no, you know. No. Dude, that fight. So, so uh, uh, yeah, Benio and I were, you know, like uh, our friendship has grown even closer, you know, especially at like the lead up to the fight, and then um, and then after, and then after the fight. But I was like, God damn it, dude, he fucking got me. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. like that one. Like, uh, learned a lot. I mean, and every fight, man, learned a lot, you know. But but yeah, everything leading up to that fight was 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 a, was fun you know shit from my freaking debut taking that fight last minute did you see uh did you see that fight what? Dude, what's your, what, what is your what is your what is your favorite one honestly man you looked amazing in the one before that uh i forgot the name of the dude the white boy i forgot his name already it slipped oh, my head uh nick hein from hein, stockholm hein. yeah yeah the stockholm fight dude the fight in stockholm was lit man and and yeah. you looked so sharp man oh my god I, you know, we were, as, that was the first fight we watched on purpose because I wanted to, my crew, my fight crew that we studied, uh, yeah, they're like, hey, show us Camacho. I'm like, dude, you, I'm like, first of all, you've seen Camacho. It's just been, you know, it's just, we watched too many fights. Let me show you. So we gather around and we put on fight pass and that's the first one I showed because I was like, man, that really showed your maturity. Um, and we'll get to this later on down the road because you have a, you have a very beautiful philosophy called the way of the fight. Um, but I've heard you talk about in other interviews, but which uh, is dude, that's dope. Yeah. <laughs> which and i love that that stuck with me um the way of the fight which is you know training and then the way of the fight it's two different beasts yeah. and and i feel like you've connected those two that night which is why i think that's one of your best overall beginning to ending masterpiece concertos you really pieced it together it looked like you were i mean oh my goodness i was so impressed so i gotta say that off the top of my head was one of my favorites um as removing myself from caring about you <laughs> you've put on yeah. other performances that were better in terms of you know back and forth exchanges so if we're looking now from a fight fan perspective man uh your fight against neil was just barbaric i'm sorry that was oh that was, that was dude so neil i mean even though even though it ended the way that it did <laughs> uh, man it was that fight i mean from what i re could recall that was like that was pretty that was a pretty gnarly fight because like dude so first off, I don't say this about a lot of people, you know what I mean? Like, but that guy's fucking good, dude. <laughs> that guy was so good. Like, <laughs> like, 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 uh, like game plan wise, uh, technical wise, you know, he didn't, he doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Shit, he doesn't, yeah, he makes very, very minimal mistakes, you know, and that's how you get through these fights, you know what I mean? And, uh, just good, man, he was just an all around guy. Fucking, and a great guy, dude. Like, like fucking great guy but so when the fight first started and then like uh halfway into the first round dude he just kept sticking me with that left hand 
it was so freaking fast, dude. It was so fast. And I was like, it got to the point where like he would hit me with it and it wasn't hard. Like he didn't, he didn't hit hard. It was just so, so like surprising. Like, honestly, like, it's so weird because you know, the fight, there's so much going on. There's yelling, there's fucking all this shit going on. Right. But like the first thing I thought of was like from, uh, uh, Chris Tucker from rush hour <laughs> when he got kicked and he's like, which one of you fucking guys hit me? You know what I mean? Dude. Like I was going to be like, yo, did the ref just hit me? Because I didn't fucking see that. You know what I mean? <laughs> dude, but it was so funny because I thought about that in the fight. Like, like that's how ridiculous it was, dude. And then, he, he uh, I couldn't do shit because, because also too, like his corner, his corner was fucking saying everything that I was going to do. Like, like, I wish, I wish we fought, I wish we fought like, uh, uh, I wish we fought like, like in the conditions now, because you would hear what his corner was saying and his corner was so like, I was, I was trying to cut him off. I was trying to, I was trying to cut him off to the right. Uh, which is a uh, walk to my right side, which is his strong side, you know, but, and I, and I always throw my, I, I always like throw my right hand or I fake and then I throw a left hook, but his corner was saying was like, Hey, watch out. He's, he's, he's going to, he's setting up the left hook. And I was like, God damn it. What the fuck do they know? Like, are they fucking reading my mind? You know? And then he's like, Oh, watch out. He's going to slip. He's going to slip. So I start throwing that head kick, you know? And I was like, God damn it. Like, yeah, that's what I. That's what you do when you throw a left hand. You gotta slip or get out of the way, you know. So, it was just so frustrating. That's why I mean. And then he dropped me in the first. So that I was just kind of like dazed. And then I got to my corner and I was just kind of like, oh shit, what the fuck's going on? And then, I don't even remember what my corner was saying. Like I was so out of it, you know. All I remember was like I was like, fuck it, dude. I can't do shit to this guy. I'm either fucking, I'm living and dying by the sword right now. Like that, like when I sat down, like right before they called us out for the second round, I was like, fuck it, dude. I'm going to come back on my shield or on it. You know what I mean? Come back with my shield or on it. I was like, fuck this, dude. So that's so, so he just kept cracking me, kept cracking me. And then when I yelled, it was because I was so frustrated. I was like, fuck it, dude, let's go, let's go. And then. All that. You were, then, uh. uh yeah, I remember if you allow me a moment because I, I that to me was what stuck out about that fight. I hate to cut you off, but man, it was worth mentioning that you backed you you backed up against the fence, and he yeah. started he he backed up towards the center of the octagon, and kind of like to say let's go, and then you just went you yelled, you let out this roar like ah like I'm feeling this. It didn't seem like you were doing it out of frustration though. I would say it it certainly seemed more of which I'm sure it was as well. I love this shit. <laughs> let's go. Yeah. Um, this is where it, this is where this is where it's at. Unfortunately, though, uh, you know, you live by the sword and die by the sword as well. And 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 yeah. he just he caught you as you were uh, bobbing. You were bobbing that direction to avoid something. It seemed, and you leaned into the kick. And of course, I'm not that I know this, but that's one of the worst ways to get caught. I guess is leaning into it. I would oh, say, oh yeah, yeah, no, no, for sure, no, for sure, because that left hand was so fast, like he just kept landing. It. I was like, man, I'm not gonna eat these left hands all day. And then, so then I was trying to slip it, but and then I knew what he was setting up, but I was like, fuck it, dude, like I'm just tired of getting, you know, like maybe maybe he's gonna throw it, and yeah, so it was just kind of one of those things, and it was a uh, it was it was a good learning experience, and and because of that, I, I went down to to 55 where I fought um, Nick Hain, you know. Yeah, where where are you looking to stay? Are you looking to stay there, 155 or? Yeah, man, I, I just feel so much better, dude. I just feel, I mean, fuck, well, dude. I mean, uh, my performance with with, uh, with Benil was just kind of whack. But, uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to get back in there, you know? Oh, my God, bro. Dude, you have no idea. You have no idea, man. Yeah. This has been tough, man, because it's like you want to train, but they tell you to keep six feet distance. That's impossible if you're sparring. Um, pick one or two friends that have quarantine just like you and then train. If you go on my Instagram, that's all it is. A bunch of bums in a damn basement right now. It just just like hey you want to roll yeah let's roll you know it's bum jitsu you got bum jitsu going on no memberships needed just just a mortgage <laughs> um, yeah, yeah that's, that's the same way man just i just got a, a, a bunch of boys that were just in quarantine and just training you know what i mean yeah yeah no 100 percent. and and i've watched uh, your instagram lately you've got one in the garage where you're hitting with some boxing gloves man you're looking good man uh oh yeah man thank you know you know like dude i have a lot of it's so crazy because uh uh um the way i train and then the way i fight are two totally kind of different things you know so it's like and then you start you start to see you start to see the synchronization with uh with nick hein 
the Nikhine fight, you know? Um, and then, you know, so, you know, so, so cool after that Nikhine fight was, I was kind of like, I, I remember talking to Colin Oyama because I switched camps for that fight. I heard. And I was like, hey, coach, man, I was like, wow, dude, I can like, I can like go through these fights and not take a lot of damage. He's like, God damn it. Yes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yes. And I was like, oh, dude. I was like, wow, that was so fun. You know, like, dude, I didn't feel like, because when I fought, when I fought a uh, Damian Brown, when I fought Drew Dober, uh, when I fought a uh, Li Jing Liang, fuck, dude, I was, I just remember just being sore as hell. Like, God damn, this sucks. I mean, it was fun, but holy shit. <laughs> your, Dober, your Dober fight was fantastic too. I mean, I'm looking at this more of, uh, which is how I look at my own matches sometimes. And it's kind of like, yeah, I lost that one. But leading up to certain moments, I had a, a lot of good things that I could keep going. And, and that Dober yeah. fight was one of them. Fun fact, though, uh, we watched it last night. I didn't notice this the first time I watched it. But uh, they mentioned your golf background. And we're like, okay, so we got a golfer in the octagon. That's cool. And then they, then then like a whole round later, they're like, "Oh, by the way, Dober used to be a baker." Yeah, so, <laughs> it was like a weird dynamic of fucking of, of of guys punching each other in the face, dude. A golfer and a baker get into an MMA match. It sounds like the beginning of a joke. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, I'm trying to rip each other's heads off, dude. Oh, beautiful! It was beautiful violence, man. Oh God. Yeah. I, I, I can't tell you how fun it is to, and you're, that's why your fights have rewatch value, man. You put on this show that it's just like, it, it, I don't care if you, how well versed you are in fighting. When you watch a Camacho fight, you're just like, oh goodness, I'm tired. I, I, I breathe in. It's, it's yeah. phenomenal. It's phenomenal. And I think that's kind of what your brand is, right? I think you figured out your fighting identity that way to just be, you know, a technical warrior, I guess. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, sometimes I, ha I have too much fun. You know, and, and at the end of the day, right, I got to learn how to, like, for longevity. But at the end of the day, man, I, I feel like it's my style. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to go out there. Like, if I go out there and I try to, like, like jab and move, dude, I'm going to get fucked up. You know, like, I don't even know how to do that. You know what I mean? Like, man, I'm just going to get into your face and I'm going to make you fight. You know, I'm going to bring, I'm going to make, keep it simple. Just make it a fight. You know what I mean? Do your coaches hate seeing that sometimes where they're like, Frank, you're, 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 you're too dangerous for yourself. You need to take care of yourself. Do you get like backlash from your corner or something after the fight? Like, Hey man, what the, what the crap? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well also too, well, man, we're, we're just trying to, we're trying to get, get these W's, but if anything, it's now it's, it's, uh, it's in the training room, you know? So now it's, now it's like, it's so cool to see where, how Colin, how coach, uh, like Otimo Yama are, they're, tr they're designing programs so that we're, uh, so that I'm practicing different things versus practicing being tough. You know what I mean? So it's like, hey, man, it's not a game of just being tough because you're always going to run into a motherfucker that's tougher than you, that can hit harder than you, you know? So it's like, how do you, uh, you know, so you, so now you create different systems and, and games within training of how to, like, outposition each other. You know what I mean? Like, how do you how do you beat someone to a better position? You know what I mean? And, yeah, you don't have to freaking let it fly and, like, fuck them up, but it's like, uh, really using the martial art for what they're designed for, you know what I mean? They're, 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 they like these martial arts are designed, you know, like fucking jujitsu, dude. It's designed for the, the the smaller, more frail fucking guy that to 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 beat like a bigger, stronger opponent, you know. And for for to to help you, uh, what do you call it? So you don't take that much damage, you know what I mean? But like, fucking use the martial arts, right? Don't you know? Like, don't fucking like move your feet. You know, so it's kind of like one of those things. Um, sometimes I catch myself having too much fun. Hey, man, I'm in the game for so much for 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 a, a short a short amount of time. Um, but you know, I'm trying to make the best out of it. And I'm I'm putting I'm putting a cap, man. Like at 35, man, I'm gonna be done. You know, like I see guys okay. try to fight way longer than than usual, and you know, I haven't had like the easiest career. So uh, I just want to you know for the longevity of myself and my family and and while i can you know when i can just fucking just go out there and, and do the best that i can with my fights you know what i mean let me yeah and 100 percent. but let me um allow me to call bullshit for a second because i think a guy like you let's say you're reaching 35 okay and and yeah. yes a plan is a plan right but we all know what a fight yeah. brings is an obstruction of that plan let's I say at 35 no, hold on hold on let's say at 35 you reach like you're feeling good you're you're tom brady they're telling you you should quit. Nice. Yeah, nice. You go ahead and grub, bro. I'm sure it's time to eat for Sorry, you. sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. you're good, man. Just no, this, this is real quality. Show, bro. I just wish we had YouTube. We're not on YouTube yet. But if we had YouTube, bro, I could be like, yo, Frank and I had lunch. Son, what's up? 
Um, no, so keep eating. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you. I'll still keep doing your thing. I'm gonna go ahead and um, just put you the scenario because we all. I, I, I get. Oh, yeah, I'm listening. 35. I mean, that's just an age where you ideally want to be done. But let's. You know where I'm going with this. I'm just gonna. This is just for the viewer, the buildup. <laughs> 35. Yeah. You're. The, you made it. You've made it to the top five at 155, where you say you're feeling great. Now you've got a number two coming, and it's your birthday. You're turning 35. You take. You say yes to see what happens, and you have the performance of a lifetime. Now title fight coming around the corner you're about to turn 36 or so because you had to go to a fight camp and and it's um i don't know let's just take a wild guess let's take a wild guess let's say it could be you know wild guess i, I don't know yeah uh you know bullshit justin gaethje let's say, yeah, let's just say justin gaethje let's say gaethje dude. Right? dude how epic would it be to step in the octagon with with the 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 punching bag that throws punches back you know the gaethje guy who just stands there and throws back with everything he's got the way you do i'm sorry you'd be 38 and i still say you take that I still say Frank Camacho takes that. Again, there will be a big debate in your house. Wifey involved. Wifey. Everybody talking about it. Remember what you said, Frank, 35. That was the deal. So do you take it? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so you see where I'm coming from with calling a little bit of bullshit because I do feel yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're right. You're right. You know, so like, yeah, I guess, you know, timing and opportunity, right? But like, I mean, for my mind, maybe, you know, just to see kind of where I'm at. But, but uh, I, I mean, I'm not, you know, I definitely have goals set, you know? I definitely have goals set and, and, and uh, of, I definitely have goals set of, of like what I'm going to do and, and, um, and, and my time frame, you know, you know what I mean? So uh, I try, I'm going to try to accomplish that before, before uh, 35, but yeah, you just never know, you know what I mean? You just never know, you know? I'm, I'm just like, cracking on you. Cause, yeah, go ahead. Because at the end like of the day, a, like a, Go ahead. We're on a delay. Yeah, you, you, you know, like who? Uh, uh, what? What really stood off for me was Seguro. You know, I don't know. Maybe he might be done. Maybe he's not. But like, uh, I, I could respect that. You know what I mean? Like, um, man, I've been fighting since. I mean, I haven't been competing for as long as he has. You know what I mean? But it was just so cool uh, for a guy to 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 be honest with himself, with himself that way. You know, maybe he might come back. For the big, you know, he and he hasn't been getting the big money fights that he's been wanting, you know. But hey, man, like fucking, I, 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 I could dig that. But the scenario you just gave me, fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're you know, that. And I'm being a straight up asshole with you because I know what you mean by I'm done at 35. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that there's no yeah. exception. It just means I built a framework around which goals I want to reach, and this is, this is what I plan now. You yeah. know, just to have a, a, a framework of where I want to be. I totally, yeah, yeah, I totally get you. I, I just like to, to push the edge a little bit because I know that we all have that inside of us where it's like, <laughs> yeah, this, is, this is the plan, but if the fight goes crazy, I'm switching it up as needed. Same thing with your career and all that. So uh, real quick, because I do want to talk about the more recent stuff in UFC uh, news and stuff, but there's one thing I got to compliment you on, and not just because you're here, but because I'm a big fan of grappling. I don't remember the dude you fought. But there was it was a fight before the UFC. It's on YouTube. I'm, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You were in a rear naked choke. Um, it looked solid. It was an Asian name sounding thing. Oh, um, man, you know, honestly, I mean, I hate to be racist or whatever. I'm kind of Asian, so it doesn't really matter. But it was like Park or something like that. Gwyn Hugh Park or some shit. Like, <laughs> I just know. I just, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Right? That's it. That's it. Dude, were, <laughs> that, yo, dude, so there's a story with that freaking guy. So, I fought the guy at 170, right? Actually, 175. I'm not a big guy, you know? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm like a smaller and welterweight. But uh, we weighed in. He came in from Korea. We weighed in. And me and my boys were just kind of like, oh, dude, we're going to fucking smash this guy. Yeah, dude, we're going to fucking get him, dude. He's so skinny. He's so frail. Dude. When he filled back up the next day, we were like, good God, he looks like a freaking light heavyweight, bro. Really? He was massive. Overnight. Overnight. We're like, what? We're like, Damn, dude, this guy fucking sucks so much water, dude. So anyway, so it was to the point like where he, we would get into the clinch and my corner would say that I disappeared. Really? <laughs> I mean, maybe the video doesn't really do it justice, but he was just a big massive guy a fight night you know so i was just like oh shit like and then i like I, it was crazy because 
I was a point, I was at a point in my career to where like, hey man, I've been doing, I've been chasing this dream like for so long. I never got to, you know, like, hey, you know, maybe this is, this might be my last fight, you know, so I did bare minimum for that fight camp, you know? I was kind of like, I was, I was either, man, I was going to do this fight and then maybe another one. And if I don't get the UFC call, then, hey, you know what? Maybe I might just hang the gloves. You know what I mean? Like, I was really at that point. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It was a, it was a, yeah. I mean, I had, I had a, I had a, I had a boy. I was getting, you know, I, I just got married and I was kind of like, man, like, I've been chasing this thing for like 14 years, bro. Fucking nothing's coming out of it. You know what I mean? Like, <sighs> Yeah, whatever. Like I was, I was at a low point of that, you know, in my in my career, and I was already about to make the moves. You know what I mean? I was already about to make the moves to like fucking just chase something else or whatever, right? And then like that just happened to be a fucking crazy ass fight, dude. It was. Oh shit. Yeah. It was. Yeah, and uh, you know what made it be- better too was the crowd. It was a small crowd. Holy but shit! But they were they were so into it, dude. They were just yelling and whatever. But anyway, back to the question, right? That 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 choke. I, I don't know what it was, but I just remember. So I remember I dropped him with a body shot. I went for a guillotine for, I don't know why the fuck I went for the guillotine. I'm not a guillotine guy. Instinct. And then I had this fucking 205 guy on top of me fucking pounding and elbowing. Dude, he threw an elbow and like his, the sharp part, the sharp part of the elbow. No, this is cool because like I'm telling you like, you know, like all the different intricate parts of the fight, right? For sure. Like, it's the tip of the elbow fucking hit me right in the eye socket, dude. And I was like, Ow, like I can't see shit. I was like, whoa, this is crazy. And then that's why I turned over. I turned over and then he cut my back and then and then we scrambled again, then he cut my back again, then the choke was in. And I just remember like it was weird because like I was I was gurgling and then he gave me the he gave me the uh, and then and then he 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 chilled for a little bit. I was like, boom, I was like, this is my only opportunity. If I if I don't if I don't like twist out or try to get out of this thing. I'm fucked, you know? So I ended up, I don't know, I, I just fucking got out. I was in my position on my head and arm, and I just fucking TP'd up, knee cut across, and got the freaking finish. And then I yelled after, and I was just like, wow. I felt so alive. It was it was amazing. It was amazing. Dude, jiu-jitsu saved, jiu-jitsu saved me there. You know what I mean? Right, right. It, the, the, the implementation of, of recognizing, uh, that was beautiful, by the way. When he sunk that in, I was like, man, he's got both hooks in. You're back completely. I mean, it was just uh, as textbook yeah, as he like, can. Yeah, I was. Uh, he was extending my back too. Like I was fucking. I was like, oh yeah. He was like super getting it. Yeah, it was deep. It was like, okay, all right, Frank. You know, you fought a you fought a good fight, man. Uh, hard, you know. Hats off to you, brother. All of a sudden, you fight the handoff, and then you did this really good thing with your um, lower body, where you swiveled your hips in such a way that. Mm. You- what a turn that 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 little hip movement very subtle but i caught it man it was the way you swiveled your hips into his guard you kind of turn into him look at me like an idiot turning away from my mic but i have to do it you turn and then all of a sudden he tries to sit up or something and the way the, the way you set up that arm triangle was beautiful because you Across exactly yeah, yeah i mean yeah. I, that that right there man you're you you don't realize how much you inspire sometimes i guess because i'm gonna start looking for that like even if i don't get the triangle at least I have a, a control point when, I, when I'm in guard. Because you were first in half. You had to put shoulder pressure on the mat, get your butt up, you know, like the pyramid, get your butt yeah. up, kick, kick the leg off from under you, get the mount, and then you just kind of work to the side to finish the, the head and arm, or the arm triangle, right? Dude, just beautiful. And you had his face, his own forearm, uh, what did you say, the bicep across his own face. You had everything set up perfectly. It, it was amazing. At that point, what level, what uh, BJJ belt were you at that point? Do you remember? I think I was a... I think I was a brown belt. I was a brown belt. It was so clean. Oh God, man. Yeah. Oh God, I'm sorry. That to me was beautiful. I'm a jujitsu head. That was beautiful. And then your yell afterward on your knees. Yeah, somebody picked you up. You gave just in a beautiful speech. You had such a crowd support system there. I, yeah. I know. I know yeah. UFC is big time, but that's big time. Yeah. No. You know that was a very memorable fight because. Uh, and then also too, what happened was was I think that year or the year before. 2015. I think the year before that fight, uh, a super typhoon hit that island. Wow. Yeah. So the, the, the like 200 mile per hour winds, like gusts up to 200 plus mile per hour, like dude, it, it like fucked it fucked up the island, dude. You know. So I guess you know everyone was kind of like um, it was it was such a nice show to have to get the people out again and watch some fights. You know. 
oh my God, tell me about it. And it's kind of a little, a little for, foresight here because we're in the same situation kind of. We're all just wanting something to cheer for. Um, but yeah, no, that fight was amazing. And, and when I saw that, I, you know, I was like, okay, this guy, this guy throw, you throw down everywhere in the fight. Even if it's on the ground and you're getting choked out, you just throw down everywhere. And I think, uh, yeah. I think that I think we need to see more of you, man. And I and I know you had a fight booked uh, recently. You were probably scheduled for two forty nine. Am I correct on that? I'm not sure if you yeah. were. No, sorry, no, two forty six or something like that. Is it recent? I was supposed to fight on uh, October twenty sixth on the Glover Teixeira card in Nebraska uh, or something like that. I, I I think I think that was the one. I took that fight uh, kind of like a last minute replacement against uh, this guy named Alan Patrick. Mm. Hasn't fought in the UFC in a while, but he's like a freaking Amazon fucking like athletic Brazilian madman, dude. Like he's just so athletic. Like he's doing backflips at the weigh-ins. I'm like, dude, I need to drink water. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so when? So that was the last time you were scheduled to fight. Um, are you? Are you, did you have any prospect recently or any any um, intention to return that got blocked by this whole COVID situation? Where you? Uh, mm. Yeah. So we're we're. We're looking like maybe a June return. Let's go. End of June. Nothing set. No one. We're not talking about anyone. You know, I'm just kind of like, man, I'm just trying to get back in there, you know? Yeah, you need to get a fight camp together. I mean, do you, are you a big fan? Do you get fight camps together? And if so, how long do they usually last? Yeah, like, I mean, an eight-week one. But, man, I've just been, I've been continuing on with training since this whole year, you know, just kind of just staying ready. If anything, the only issue is, uh, is, is weight. You know, if you, if you follow my career, weight's always been an issue, you know? So uh, I'm I'm doing a whole lot better, and uh, just just trying to get my just get my weight down to where like I could take a last minute fight at 55. Besides the whole typical, it's food. Food makes me like this. I can't lose control. What is what is the? Can you pinpoint what is it that makes it difficult for you? Is it actually that the very typical thing? Food is that what it is, or what is it exactly? Um, that you off? Yeah, I think I I think so. Um, <laughs> I think so. Uh, I mean, like you know, just really trying to look at it. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't know, man. It was genetically, like, fucking, I'm, like, my <laughs> island boy. Like, I'm just fucking, like, you know, say, here we go. Here we go. Like, look, you're making, forcing me to look for fucking excuses. No, man, because I'm just big bone, dude. I'm just big bone, you know? But, yeah, I think it comes down to, to just the, the, the discipline, the diet. You know what I mean? Man, that's, that's the first fight that you sign up for when you sign up for a fight, you know? I hear. Yeah, bro, you're fighting the scale, dude. You're fucking fine, dude. My my fight my fight against um uh in Australia where I missed weight against Damian Brown. Mm. So that morning I was 157, 157, 158, but I was so dehydrated that I I had the my coaches had to hydrate me just so I could walk to the scale. That's why I weighed in at 160. That's unbelievable. It's wild, dude. Yeah, like almost fucking died, dude, in the hot tub, bro. They're like cooking me in the hot tub. Damn. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So you know. So that. So that's why I went up to one seventy, and then I'm now I'm back to fifty five. But now I'm working. You know, just uh, you know, all all these experiences kind of like have uh, you know, paved the way to to the results that I'm getting now. You know. Hundred percent, man. And um, on that note, uh, who do you want next, man? Who, what's a name that, if you had to fight next, uh, that's within uh, realistic parameters in terms of the rankings? Um, you, I know your goals are to make it in the top ten. Obviously, it's everyone's mm -hmm. goal. And you've talked about this in other interviews that I've watched. But what is it? What? Who's the next guy for you? Who's somebody you're interested in fighting? And then I'll ask you another question. Conor McGregor, you're taking everything I worked for. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you think you're cooler um, from I'm from Guam. It's a cooler story. Let's go. Yeah, I know, right? Dude, um, you know, you know who I would love to fight, and I think would be a good fight. Thinking about it now is uh, and I've been and I've been uh, I've been Instagram stalking him, dude. But man, such a cool dude, fellow Islander. Uh, I would love to to share the octagon with um Yancey Medeiros. Medeiros, holy shit, that'd be uh, that'd be fire, straight fire. Yeah. Uh, didn't he fight? Uh, did he fight Calvary? Lando Veneta. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fire. No, but Medeiros has some sick fights, and I've been there live for him. I just can't remember which arena it was right now. Damn, my, my memory is well, failing. He fought, dude, he fought both Cowboys. He fought uh, Cerrone, and he fought his fight with the... Uh, yeah, the uh, Brazilian Cowboy. Brazilian Brazilian Cowboy. That one was a crazy one, dude. 
that that was I was there. That was I either Chicago or Detroit. One of those two. I'm telling you, I was there. I was there. Wow. That we lost our shit. We lost our shit. We lost our shit. We just said we. I just saw a fight of the night. I don't need to see more. It was amazing. Oh. That fight was gangster. Um, I was also there when Overeem knocked out. Um, sorry, when Overeem got knocked out by uh, Nganu. And let me tell you, that was killer too. <laughs> yeah, you saw that live. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I thought I, I witnessed murder. Yeah, that was in Detroit for sure. That was in Detroit. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. We uh, since I live in Indiana, everything connects. You know, you got Chicago, you got Indianapolis, yeah. you got Detroit. I'm like in the center of all. And by the way, I'm from Miami, Florida. I don't want you to think I'm some. Uh, I'm actually, you know, right here, like, a, like a what is it? Um, like, you're a Midwest boy. I'm not. Is right? I'm not. Is it, yeah, yeah, I don't know, but that's the, that's the Midwest, right? The Midwest. Yeah, the Midwest. Good job, man. You know more about where I'm at than I know about where you're at. Uh, but, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah no, my. I'm, my my wife side of me says my wife is uh her dad is from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Michigan. That's right there. That's so we right. would go there every year. Cool, cool, cool. So you're familiar with how this is a frozen wasteland. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> frozen wasteland. You got to keep the weather where you're at. It's beautiful. Uh you know, yeah. it's, it's you just, it it's, dude. Yeah, I would like the view. Bro, that's beautiful. Man, it's yeah, well, it's a little yeah, what's well, a nice yeah, day I'm, today? I'm gonna hit the beach. Oh, man, how far are you from the beach? Um, <laughs> walking or driving, five minutes or ten, depending. <laughs> like, like three minutes, like maybe like at thirty miles an hour driving. You know, damn, it's beautiful, beautiful. How many inha- How many people live there? How, do you know the population? Probably like 180,000 Wow, yeah, hundred eighty thousand. About like thirty thirty miles long. Yeah, about yeah, it's a thirty mile long island. Uh, hundred eighty thousand. Fuck. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Uh, 80 degrees, 85 degrees all year. Oh, man, I know, dude. Dude, hey, I'm it's from so Miami. Stale. So, no, but it's beautiful, man. And, uh, I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is like really good weather. <laughs> you, uh, no, so your last name, Camacho, when I first heard it back, when you had your debut back in 2017, I, I heard that you were from some place I didn't uh, know a lot about, like Guam. I mean, I know it's a U.S. territory and all that, but that's yeah. it. I have no. Uh, and then, how, so how, do, how does this work? How does this uh, heritage thing work where you have Hispanic-sounding last names? I was just curious. Yes. I don't have nothing to do with fighting. So, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm probably not the best guy to talk about, like, history or anything. <laughs> oh, man. But, Class is in order. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but but so we were colonized by uh, so the Mariana Islands is a chain of fourteen islands and uh, and and Guam, and so the indigenous people were called uh, the name of the indigenous people are Chamorro people, you know Chamorros. So we're from from like uh, we're Pacific Islanders from the region of Micronesia. So. Hmm. So okay, so there's there's Micronesia, there's Melanesia, there's Polynesia, and then there you know and Polynesia. So you know you have guys like from Samoa, they're Polynesian, you know, hmm. and then you have Melanesian people, and then and where we come from, uh, the so you look at the Pacific Ocean, there's a shitload of little dot islands in there. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's it separated. Yeah, kind of like West Coast, East Coast, whatever. Right. So we're Micronesia, and uh, so we're Micronesian. You know. Um, so we were colonized by the Spanish. Fuck, I don't even know the date, dude. I need to fucking do my. But, but yeah, like a few hundred years ago, and that's the reason why, like our language and 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 a lot of majority of our last names are are Spanish. You know, kind of like you know you go to Brazil and you in in it's like huge like Portuguese influence or or in like South America we're Spanish. You know, because like we're we're just colonized by the Spanish, and then uh. No, no, you know, and then World War Two, and then and then kind of got juggled around, juggled around with like colonizers and shit, and then now we're U.S. territory. Sounds like there was a game of of Monopoly, and you guys were just like people rolling the dice, landing. Ah, I'm gonna sell this. I'm gonna go landing again. Ah, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give these guys, you know. So, so that's like, so that's like a huge identity thing going on here, you know, um, kind of like the Hawaiian Islands. But uh, but but because of where we're at, like in the Pacific strategically like uh like for the u.s military it's a it's it's a it's it's a very like important part of like having this area to control the whole pacific you know mm-hmm. we're three hours from japan we're four hours a flight three hour flight from japan we're four hours from from australia we're right smack in the middle you know so that's why we have a huge uh navy base and a huge air force base here mm. that is that does that get noisy 
Um, no, I mean, it doesn't get noisy because it's in the northern part of the island and the southern part of the island, but it's like, a, you know, there's, there's a huge military influence here. Yeah, that's one of the things I read. And I was, that's why pretty much I asked you the question because it's like, there's got to be, with, with the history combined and all this military stuff, you guys live in a very, very uh, peculiar, like, particular part of the world. It's, it's just super yeah. interesting when you're in Guam. So, yeah, yeah, we're far, dude. It's, it's a hike to get here, dude. <laughs> I, I need to know this because we're talking about islands and all that stuff. And I'm sure you've heard it. I don't know how much intel you get. I mean, you're, you know, I don't know. But Fight Island, how real is it? And what do you know that you're allowed to say without getting your head chopped off? Man, honestly, I have no idea what the heck it is about. I don't even know where. I'm trying to, you know, like, you know, here I am. I don't, I'm here trying to think of talking with all my friends. I'm like, man, I think it's here. I'm even trying to get it out of my manager if he knows. But he's like, dude, no one fucking knows. I'm like. I'm like, ah, I mean, Fight Island would be kind of cool, but it's just be going to another island like where I'm from, you know? But I mean, it's packaged probably really nice, you know? Yes, think about it. Like, think about it, dude. It could be like a Disney World for fighters where you go and it's just arena, hotels, and a couple of places in between, and then you have beaches. And then it could be a vacation spot for, for couples who want to go to like do a honeymoon and then catch a good fight. I'm just saying it's yeah. historic. Now during the whole, and people love calling it the situation we're going through. It's like, bro, just fucking say it. Everybody's thinking it. I hate when I, have you ever gotten that on a, on a text message or phone call? You know, I, I was trying to get out there, but I couldn't because of this whole situation. I'm always yeah. like, I'm always like, what situation? Fucking say it. <laughs> say it, damn it. It's not a no, bad word. Situation. <laughs> And, and to hang out with people, it's like an STD, man. It's like, yo, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Who have you been with? Where, what, wait, wait, no, no, no. Let's talk about this. How many people have you seen in the last two weeks? And, yeah. and, what, what are they, and who have they been seeing? Yeah. <laughs> this, shit, this is absolute shit, but it'd be historic for you, man, to imagine. I, I know you wouldn't say no, but imagine a, a historic fight in Fight Island. Valentina Shevchenko talks about it on her social medias all the time. She's like dreaming of Fight Island. So I'm like, do UFC fighters have some kind of insight on what Fight Island is? And now that I got you, I figured I'd ask. So you, you just know that it's as much as I do, which is Dana White keeps talking about it. We're hoping it's going to be something like Jurassic Park. Let's get it going. Dude, yeah, you know, and, you know, honestly, like they have it under wraps like really well. Like, like they're doing a good ass mm -hmm. job at like, you know, like I would think like reporters or people, shit would get leaked or whatever, you know, but man, it's, like, it's almost, almost real fake, you know? You're like, man, are they just saying this just to say it, you know? It's inconsistent. It's like, oh, we're, we have Fight Island, but we're building it. But we have it, but we're building it. It's like, which one is it? Yeah, so, so it's kind of like, I'm kind of like, oh, man, I'm like, oh, do I, do I, uh, my expectations, you know? It's like, fuck, like, what is it going to be? It's like, yeah, you can go there and train there with your camp. I'm like, whoa, dude, this is going to be like a UFC PI there? Like, oh, shit. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, uh, if they, and if they can even throw in an Ultimate Fighter episode. Yeah, dude, no, no, but, but I would love to get on that card. You know, how, imagine how historic that would be. Yeah. And have a fucking epic fight. You know what I mean? That'd be dope. Of course. Of course. One for the ages. Maybe when you're 35 and you're officially uh, telling yourself, <laughs> right, for me, maybe we'll get you there. I really, I mean, I'd be, I'd be all over it, man. Um, yeah. So, yeah, honestly, this is, these are, these are my notes, by the way, on a napkin. Just, uh, yeah, my man. <laughs> my notes are on a napkin because I wanted this to flow and I just put a couple things like make sure you talk about Fight Island and the way of the fight, um, which I think is a beautiful philosophy you have, which is uh, I, I just think it's amazing because you train things instinctively. But when the fight happens, um, you know, there's just an, there's an, a change in dynamic in, in you yourself as a fighter. Uh, do you you seem to respond well? Do you like that that? feeling of not knowing if you're prepared as much as you thought like there are times where the fight evolves into places where maybe you're like oh man do you like the feeling of the unknown meaning they've got you in a clinch he's stronger than you thought uh I, it seems to me like you're addicted to it and that's something that, that i've always wanted to ask someone like you like how how do you deal with that mentally what, what what do you go through in your mind to when the fight evolves into places that are not necessarily the fortes you trained in what, what do you say tell yourself to keep fighting through it and finding better positions so, there's, so there's, uh, back in the day, I, tr I, I worked out and trained with a guy named uh, Roddy Ferguson, um, judo Olympian, multiple time uh, national champion. So, you know, to, to be to, to represent the U.S. In, in the in the Olympics in judo, you have to be a bad freaking guy, dude. You know, anyway, he had this mantra and uh, it really stuck with me, man. And I, and I really taken it to heart and I continue to take it to heart. It's, it goes like this, um, again, 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 you must program your mind to have no endpoint and program your mind to look for another opportunity to go again, 
again, again, again. So, Mars. yeah, you know, so, so it's kind of like, it's like, whoa, shit, you know, like, uh, you know, so you see, so, I mean, it, yeah, I guess, it, it, I, and I guess that type of mantra, that philosophy, I, I, I like to, I, I'm comfortable in it so that when something new comes up and where I have to dig down and I have to like, like, oh shit, I am tired, but I got to keep going forward. It's like, I'm like, fuck yeah, I love this shit. Now, now you're gay, you now you're, 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 you're joining me, you know, and now you're coming into my world, dog. I'm tired, but I'm going to keep coming. You know what I mean? And, uh, and I, maybe, maybe I just, you know, but it's weird though, because like, you know, I always ask my mom this because I, you know, I never grew up like as a fucking wild kid or, you know, like I played golf. Um, I never played any sports. I played golf since I was five. The, you know, the plan, the plan was to go to fucking college on a scholarship. You know what I mean? And every Sunday I would play the ukulele for the uke for church, the church choir. You know what I mean? Like, like I never got in, I've never been into a street fight in my life. You know, like I'm always a fucking... Like island boy, like, hey, what's up, man? You know, like I'm fucking cool. You know, just you know, like I, 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 I hate confrontation. You know, like my fucking dude, my wife and I, like, like my, it's it. <laughs> at one point, it was it was an issue in our in our relationship because I did everything possible to stay away from a from even like a disagreement. You know what I mean? And it's so weird because it's the total opposite in my fights. You know, so I don't know, like, so you know, like, like. I'm really learning truly about myself, putting myself in these positions and really just fucking like digging down and digging deep and fighting hard because I'm really learning about myself. And I guess that's my addiction and my, uh, my passion for martial arts. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a way for this, fuck it. It it saves, it saved my life, bro. Like it's really teaching me lifelong lessons that I'm learning for myself and, and eventually pass on to my two boys. You know, I have a, I have a four year old and a uh, one-year-old that's going to be a two-year-old, you know, and, and, you know, I never went to college. I mean, could have, but it just wasn't my thing, you know, like if I went to college, I would have fucking just ditched to go train, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, yeah, so MMA and martial arts has been my, 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 my instructor, you know, it's been my, my, my teacher and yeah, it's fucking trial by fire. Like, like if, if you, it just, it just happens to be that if you, if you, if you, if you lose, you know, it's, it could be devastating, like a fucking head kick, you know what I mean? So it's a real, it's a real good teacher. It's a real good instructor. And it's something that I, that I really am passionate about, you know, and maybe that's why I have too much fun with these fights, you know what I mean? And, uh, um, yeah, I don't know, man, I kind of just went on a fucking tangent, but yeah, it's like it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it. it's kind of like, it's just one of those things, bro. Like it's, uh, um, and the crazy thing is, is that like I've been doing this for so long, but I'm still such an infant, and I'm still learning so much in the game. You know what I mean? And it's so fascinating and so intriguing that I just want more. You know, and I wish, I wish I could just be fighting all the times because because I would love to be learning more about myself. You know, I mean, I don't mean don't don't mean to sound like fucking corny or anything, but it's like that's truly why I do it. You know what I mean? And maybe that's why I truly fight so hard. You know, and it's truly why. Like I try to like put everything and, and, and it's, and you know, what's so fucking cool though, man. Um, what's so fucking cool is, uh, man, I like, uh, I, I, like, I think I almost get like, get teary eyes thinking about it is, um, uh, my, my UFC debut, right. I fought Li Jingliang, the fucking, this, this big ass Chinese guy. Fuck. He's, he was, he was, he was gnarly dude. Uh, I just remember losing the fight, losing the decision, um, and then getting to the hotel and then finding out that we got fight of the night, you know? Hey, man, fight of the night fucking helps you out as a, as a UFC fighter. Do you get 50K? I mean, yeah, minus the taxes and the manager fees and whatever, right? But, but yeah, you get an extra 50K in your bank account. It's like, wow. Yeah, the, you know, honestly, so, so this is where I get teary eyed and really get emotional because... Uh, um, yeah, the money's fucking cool, right? Yeah, the money's great. I'm not going to lie. But the coolest part about getting fight of the night the first time and then the, the, the rest of the time, like the second, my second fight and my third fight, was how the fans, the UFC, the matchmakers, and everyone really appreciated the fucking guts and glory and heart that I put into it, you know? And they really felt it, you know? People felt it and people saw it, you know? Like... 
like, yeah, I guess I could go out there and fake a yell, you know what I mean? And just try to like, whatever, but man, no, that was pure heart. You know, that was me. That, that was, that was me that you saw that, that everyone saw there. And that was me that the UFC matchmakers and the UFC staff saw and, and, and they awarded us the fight of the night, you know? And, uh, that was just so, that was, that was, that was just fucking cool, dude. You know, like, and I'm constantly learning about myself even more, you know what I mean? And that's why I want to put a cap at it, uh, you know, at a, or at least around a, a time frame, you know, because I feel like if I continue to do it, uh, do it more, my age will catch up and, and it will just be more devastating than, than positive, you know what I mean? Then it would just be another, another dream for me to, or another goal for me to chase through maybe teaching or through fucking whatever the fuck this life journey fucking brings me, you know, but. Yeah, anyway, like it was it was so cool that that people appreciated the heart that I that I that I bring all the time. You know, so so you know, so when I get messages from you guys, I'm like, hey, can we have you on the podcast? It's like it, it, it like like it makes me feel so good. I'm like, wow man, these guys really want you know, and then you're talking about how my fights are. It's like wow, you know, like that's really nice because uh uh man, I've been doing this for so long, bro, but it's so cool that other people can appreciate it. So, so for the kind words, man, thank you, brother. I appreciate that, man. Oh, come on. You, 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 you yeah. got them. The kind words were fight of the night. You had them right there and say, Hey, yeah. fight of the night. And I agree with it, man. And, and that's why I mentioned it. Hey, three time fight of the night winner. That's, that's something that you take with you forever. And I will say this, these fights are the fights that we're going to take with us forever. Uh, no pressure. Uh, <laughs> but I think you nailed it on the head, man. Uh, you know, I don't know if you ever saw the famous tweet that Adesanya uh, texted Gastelum, and I'm sure you saw that fight. And if you didn't, I'll give you my oh, fight pass account. I'll give that, you my no, fight account. Yeah, no, that <laughs> fight. I, I I just watched that the other day. Dude, holy I've, shit! I've watched that fight maybe four or five times since it happened. <laughs> just 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 to relive it. Yeah. Um, I mean, technical and just powerful. And, and one thing Adesanya said to Gastelum, which I think is what you just nailed on the head, and it's something that all fighters will agree with, is, you know, um, that was truly some epic, I forgot what he said. I was epic shit, something along the lines of that. And then he says, I know you now, and you know me. You know, those words, I'm sure it kind of resonates with what you just said. Bro. You saw me. Yeah, so. This is, it. This is me in 100%. 100%, bro, because it's like, um, you know, they're, uh, what do you call that? I think Anthony Nui, he he comes from like the the he got it from the Bushido or fucking I don't know where, but for for he who sheds his blood with me today shall forever be my brother, you know, and uh, so Leech the Li Jing Liang, fuck. I mean, I would love to talk to him, but he doesn't fucking speak English, so I can't fucking communicate with him, you know. <laughs> like I tried tweeted, I, I try I, like I tweeted tweeted at him one time when he was gonna fight uh, after my fight, and he said something, and I was like, dude your google translate fucking sucks okay i'm not gonna message you ever again cool dude though yeah so, <laughs> but but like uh like damian brown my fight with damian brown drew over uh i mean all these guys that i shared the 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 octagon with like um uh, it's cool because I, I i i you know no homo you know but i, I it's it's very it's a very special very special like uh um 15 minutes that i that i spent with these guys you know that I, that mm -hmm. I could never that I would that that no one else that I would have very very uh, it would just be a very special moment that I have with these guys than no one else in the world you know one hundred percent that's it it's a very unique experience and no homo even further I'll take it to say this it's a, it's a, I would even almost say it's a, an intimate experience because you're getting to know someone oh hell yeah 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 it's, and that sounds really homo but you know what I mean by intimate it's it's very mm -hmm. unique in itself and it's very exclusive to to very few people who will ever get to know you that way which is why Adesanya mm -hmm. said. Uh, you know, I know you now, and you know me. You heard me breathing uh, the last, the last. That's bars, man. I'm sorry, that's bars again. We're gonna be spitting bars all day, but and and honestly, man, as a fight fan, that's where it's at for me. The spirit of it is right in those lines you said. You know, this is me, and mm -hmm. and and uh, I don't I don't know how much longer you have, so I don't mean to milk you too long. But you wear no. this thing that's totally you. It's this golden. You know what I'm talking about. Go ahead. Just oh yeah, the necklace, bro. What is yeah, the necklace? Let me do the fuck a word. Where is it? I don't even know where it's at. Uh, if you, if you uh, look at the necklace, I'll take a picture of it. But that necklace, it, it feels like it resembles something very uh, deep and has a message, something deep for yeah. you, kind of like a poker player's bracelet or something that they wear. <laughs> yeah. Dude, so, so, so my, in, so in the, I'm a proud island boy, you know, I'm a proud Chamorro boy, you know, from the Marana Islands. And uh, so my ancestors, uh, pre Spanish time, 
um, they wore these necklaces, right? Or it was kind of like jewelry. So it's it's a it's a kind of like it's like an orange oyster shell. Like it's called a spondylus. Spondylus. And spondylus. Uh, S P O N D Y L U S. Spondylus. Okay. So it's like a spondylus. Yeah, you should search that. Um, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so it's like it's like a but the the shells are so hard to find. And the 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 necklace that I was wearing, uh, a friend of a friend of a friend, made it from one of the northern islands of my island chain group in the Mariana Islands, you know. And uh, it's so back in the day. Uh, I mean, according to history, right? Like the spondylus was it was a form of currency for uh, for like uh, like my, my ancestors. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool. So like so, I guess wearing it, I. I uh, uh, I just try to, you know, we're, we're, yeah, we're, we're Islanders or whatever, but we come from a very, you know, we're a small group of people, you know, from a small Island group, but it's just, um, just, a, I'm a, I'm a, just a proud local boy, just trying to represent, uh, the small Island in Micronesia, you know, in the Pacific. So you can't even see us on the map, bro. We're like a little dot. You know what I mean? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It's like, <laughs> here's Guam, here's Guam. And I'm going like this. I'm zooming. I'm zooming. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. what's up, bro? Exactly. Um, yeah, man. So that, so I saw that necklace and I'm like, man, that looks so mm -hmm. damn unique. It's very unique. I've never seen anything like it. Uh, there's pictures of you with your hand raised and the necklace around your neck. And I was just like, man, that looks like really, I, I, I had yeah. to kill myself if I didn't ask you, bro. I, man, thanks for asking, bro. Because, and then also too, um, people, you know, like, uh, you know, marketing wise, right? Like how do you stand out in the UFC, right? Yeah. You got to fucking fight hard and fucking whatever, but it's like, you know, people paint their hair. People act crazy. People talk mad shit. They step out of character, whatever. I'm just stepping deeper into my character, you know? And it's kind of cool that it stands out. So, and, 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 and the questions are asked so that, at the end of the day, man, I'm a proud island boy and I just kind of want to show the world where I come from, you know? Come from a fucking nice beaches, 85 degrees all year. Hey, you want to visit? Come visit, you know? Fucking eat some good food, you know? Yeah, you're probably not going to make weight, but, <laughs> you know, but yeah, come down, just, you know? Man, so it, island hospitality. I would love to, if I'm lucky enough to travel, I and mean, that's got to be one destination I go to just to check out everything. And of course, the military bases and all, it's got to be impressive to see all that from like an outside perspective where we're just like mm -hmm. normal day society. And then we go to an island where there's, you have old culture and then you have a bunch of like new technology with all this bases and stuff. And it must be a good, interesting clash among the island. Look, it's just so unique. It's very unique because um, Hawaii is cool. But Hawaii still, I mean, Hawaii has a lot of like a, like, I guess, countryside, right? Like where it's, it, you, you feel the, the local culture. So Guam, Guam is like Hawaii, like Hawaii, like 20 years ago. So it's really, it's slower pace, you know, but at the same time, like what I love about Guam is like, man, if you want to go to a bar and, and, and feel like you're freaking at, in, in Pacific beach in California, you know, like, dude, you can, you know what I mean? Uh, Dude, you want to get some pancakes at IHOP? Hey, man, there's an IHOP and there's like, you know, there's a freaking Applebee's down the street or whatever, you know? But if you mm -hmm. want the countryside, want that island, like, camp out, like, fucking in the boonies with White Sand Beach and just you and yourself and no packed beaches, you have that too, you know? So it's a, it's a really cool dynamic uh, here in the islands. It's just really blessed, bro. Just really blessed. Yeah, cost of living is kind of high because everything comes in and everything is shipped in. But, you know, there's, you know, you got to give and take, you know what I mean? Can you give me an idea of what something expensive is that's a normal thing to us? Because I know your input because of the imports and all that, it's kind of high. I do know that. Um, what's something like? What's a normal price for something that's expensive that otherwise wouldn't be? Like where? Where? Like what's a what's like a carton of milk for you or something that's normal in a grocery store that gets imported? Can you think of anything off the top? Of my, I just want to gauge how expensive. Pack of cigarettes. Okay, uh, <laughs> um, let me think. Apple Jacks can go up to like seven bucks the fuck out of here six bucks yeah now you find it on special for like five the hell how do you feed your kids man huh how do you feed your kids man i know go out there and freaking pick some freaking some coconuts god damn it <laughs> you're making coconut cereal dog <laughs> i mean the, the yeah yeah, yeah so, didn't get mad at you yeah <laughs> yeah no so so i mean so that's that you know um I, you know what would be a good gauge is milk, right? What what does a gallon of milk cost in like stateside? Two and change, maybe maybe three bucks. I'm not sure, something like that. 
Yeah, we're probably like at five, five some. Sheesh. Is your gas in Yeah, but, but oh, gas is like three bucks. Like okay, it's so. 301. Yeah, so gas is okay. I mean, so so just a couple things, right? I mean, not everything's so inflated, right? Like if you get like a, <clears throat> what kind of car, what kind of car do you drive? Honda. Honda Civic. A Honda what? Honda Civic. Yeah. So I think you can get get a Honda Civic out here for. Man, you know, honestly, I don't even know. Twenty. Or, so okay, so like a Hyundai Accent, a Hyundai Accent here would be probably like sixteen k. Sixteen. Sixteen, seventeen k. That's that's within the same range. Yeah, right. we're looking at. The yeah, same. right. Yeah, see, so 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 it's kind of like it's kind of the same. So you're you're stateside, but you're not. Um, power. Uh, so the housing market is definitely cheaper. Um, yeah, but just, just certain things are just so, you know, like, you know, the whole give and take, you know, like, Hey man, I'll, 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 I'll have to, I'll fork up fucking six bucks for some Apple Jacks or from cinnamon toast crunch for a killer sunset every day, you know? So it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. Worth, um, but yeah. Yes. But then, but then, you know, like our Amazon prime is fucking like four days five days you know like it, it like if that if and you know so it's like oh god so every time i'm stateside doing camps i'm like holy shit next day or sometimes same day dude this is freaking wild <laughs> the little things we we don't appreciate enough i guess um 100 like, percent, bro <laughs> do, you, do you speaking of little things i appreciate I, to me there's something magical about saturday night fight night um it's just like a, a holiday in your week in the middle of your week you have a day where you're off you get all your shit taken care of and then you start watching prelims or whatever you're into. And then you've got this epic fight night. That's just going to bring you thrills and chills all the way through. Um, do you, do you watch fight nights? Are you a fight watcher as well? Or are you just kind of, Oh hell yeah, dude. Oh man. I love watching fights do so. Like, yeah. So I think I've, I've been getting like, uh, like fight overload because I, and I watched all the fights on, you know, of course, uh, the Tony Ferguson, Justin Gaethje fight. I watched the whole card from top to bottom. And then this I past see. Wednesday, I had a teammate, a good friend of mine, <clears throat> Ricky Simone, fought. You know, um, do he? Yeah, he did well against Ray Borg. You know, fuck, what a great! And then, uh, is he a training then, partner? Yeah, and then, yeah. Is so, he, so he, so we both. I mean, we we both. He he was he comes to uh, Oyama's um, for camps. Like he'll he'll come in for like a few weeks or whatever, and then I, you know I would catch him there a couple times, and we're managed by the same guys. That's at one thirty-five, right? Yeah, he fights at 135. Yeah, I saw that fight. That was beautiful. I mean, the pace oh. of that fight. Did that get fight of the night? I didn't look into the specs of that, but it I was think, up there. It was up there. Yeah, it was up there. It was up there. I think, uh, who got fight of the night? I don't even know, to be honest with you. I don't even know. But I, I did, I did, we did agree at the house that, uh, that, 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 um, Simone fight was one of the top. I mean, the Bray Borg fight was just, oh, we loved it, man. It was, it got a yeah. lot of recognition. I keep telling people because for some reason, the people don't, when they see little or smaller guys fighting, nobody respects it. Like Mighty Mouse, come on, dude. That guy, let, let's, Bro. Let's, talk, let's talk real here. Technique for technique. Have you seen, and correct me if I'm wrong, have you seen anybody move better than that guy across all disciplines in MMA? Dude, the best. So this is, this is my thing, right? Like, if you could take Demetrius Johnson and, like, at the, at the, at the peak of his career and just kind of, like, uh, like, grew him into, like, a sizable bantamweight, a sizable featherweight, a sizable light heavyweight, uh, lightweight, all the way to heavyweight. Like, if you could just grow his body and his technique and everything, he would be the champ at all the weight classes. He had the style. He had the technique. He had the gas tank, you know? Like, if you just made him, like, a bigger version for the, the weight class, dude, he would be the champion in all the classes, bro. He would be unbeatable. What did you think about the submission he hit? Now we say Ray Borg, that's kind of what connected in my brain. Did you see the, the pickup, the little slam pickup to an armbar transition he made? That's just unreal. Okay, man, unreal, bro. Unreal, you know? And the crazy thing is, is that he's been doing that for years. <laughs> he's still doing it. He's in one championship. He, he's fucking still doing it. He's still doing it, dude. Yeah, um, you know, and what's sad about it is that he, a guy like him, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be tainted. He's tainted with this one thing that happened, which was, and I'm sure you know it, when Dillashaw came around and said, what's up, I'm here, I'm dropping down to your weight class, all of a sudden, Mighty Mouse was nowhere to be found. And yeah. I, that, that, yeah, so, so the way that, this is the way the fans see it. Now, of course, you know more than anyone that what happens behind the curtains 
And what the fans think sometimes and oftentimes is not what aligns. Like, for example, Khabib got accused of not wanting to fight Ferguson. Khabib's not afraid of anyone, bro. Like, stop the bullshit story. He's not. Yeah. Uh, he just didn't have the clearance to leave Russia, and we get why. But going back to Mighty Mouse, he was, uh, you know, the, the, this is the way we fans see it. You know, he was on top of the world. He had answered all the challenges that were in his weight class. He had, if you look up the top 10, he cleared them all, it, even with a knockout over Benavides in the rematch. Um, and now you've got a guy coming down who's saying, hey, I'm ready to fight you. And we, he didn't, supposedly he didn't take the fight. And I think once that happened, I think Dana cut him, traded him for Ben Askren. Yeah. Traded him for Ben Askren? I know. I, I don't know, man. I'm, you I'm, know, I, I, really, I really wonder what happened there. You know, like... Me um, too. Me too. Me too. But, you know, that was, I think, for his family, that was the best move for, for Demetrius Johnson. And I was going to ask you that on the inside of things. You know, he probably yeah. made career decisions. Yeah, uh, definitely career decisions, you know? And even Eddie Alvarez. <sighs> Eddie's another one. I, I, brawler from hell. Man, that's you, a guy I would love to fight eventually down the line, you know, but unfortunately, I might, I might not cross paths with him ever, you know? Fuck that. No, no, no. This can't happen. You and Eddie or you and Gaethje? And by the way, when Eddie and Gaethje fought, I was also there. That that knee knockout, I was also there for that. It was on the same Whoa. time. I'm telling you, man, I've been lucky in this life, man. I've, I've gotten to see a lot of beautiful things in life. Valentina Chevchenko head knockout over, uh, I forgot her name, Jessica. I was, it? I was there that night as well. <laughs> damn yeah I, i've been really lucky my guy I, and and i hope that one day you're on a prelim that i get to to go be a part of i really please do. bro please hell yeah I really do man it would be i would i would i would uh, it would be amazing it'd be a pleasure to to watch but dude yeah so uh fuck i was, fuck, I was just about to say something ah fuck whatever <laughs> No, and I hear what you're saying on the whole Mighty Mouse thing. There had to be, have been some some other motive going on in his life, and and that's what I'm saying. Us as fans, we don't see the conspiracy that you guys go through. Uh, you, I mean, we, we're not sorry. What you're going through is not transparent to us, you know. So all we see is Mighty Mouse beating everyone, and the super fight that we all wanted was Dillashaw Mighty Mouse, and we never got it. And that's just kind of like the saltiness we get as fans. Like, damn it, that would have been perfect. That would have been fucking perfect. You know. Got it. I think I think I think that was, but then that man, who am I? I don't even know. You know what I mean? But I, I could, it was probably like a negotiations money issue or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. I just would have liked to see a guy like you said, a guy who, if you stretched out across all weight classes, do it against D- Dillashaw, who is one of the best strikers at one thirty-five, in my opinion. Um, and yeah, man. And then going back to this uh, Eddie Alvarez, you mentioned Eddie Alvarez, and now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of a fighter's dream. A guy like your style. Is everything Dude. Alvarez fights for, and vice versa? Yeah, you know, so so like you know, think about it now, right? Like Styles make fights, and uh, yep. uh, like I would do so, I would do so much better against a Justin Gaethje than I will uh, than I would against like a Tony Ferguson or like a Khabib, you know? Because you know, matchup matchup wise, you know, like. Like, like Tony, I just don't know, but, but I, I feel like I would put up a better, like I, I would fight, oh, it would be a more entertaining fight with me and Justin Gaethje than it would be for me and Tony, because Tony, I think would just, uh, it would just be different, you know what I mean? Like he's, his style is different, he might roll to a leg lock and I'd be like, ah, oh, fuck, what the fuck, you know, like you just, <laughs> you just don't know, you know what I mean? You just, you just don't know, but uh, style makes fights, and 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 Eddie Alvarez is one of those guys that I was like, fuck, man, is one of the one of him that I, I would love to share, you know. You know, another guy that I've always wanted to fight back in the day was uh, I, and he's, and I think he's still fighting, really. I think he's still Gilbert Melendez. I would love to fight him at fifty five. Did you watch the Diego fight? Yes. That's oh, what I yeah, picture, that's what I pictured you guys going down if you guys ever fought. That's the only way I see it happening. Yeah, and then Diego, Diego's another guy too, you know, uh, that, that we've, we've been trying to get. Diego would be great. Um, and, and not to take anything away, but he's nowhere what he used to be. Right. And, and, sure. and I think, I think it's still a big name though, because he was the nightmare for a long time up until he fought BJ Penn. Everything for him was upward after yeah. that, I, after that first round against BJ Penn, he just, you, you could just feel it. And after that, his career was never the same. And, and I think that, um, you know, this is how fighting works, right? No, 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 it's nothing personal. It's just, you know, you're on a decline, but you're still enough of a name. I'm on the rise. Let's go. Like, let's meet right here. And so, so career wise, career wise, say that would be such a smart move for me. 
I, I would think so. Yeah. And, and it will be an entertaining fight. Uh, it will be a good fight. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. He's, I know Diego's just stuck at fighting at 70, 170, even though he's, like a, he's, he's, a, he's not a big guy, you know. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's always been a wild man. You know what I mean? He just, he just don't know what he's like thinking of or whatever, but he's, it works for him and he's, he's getting through it. And he's, uh, you know, I, I've vibed with him a couple of times. He's man, just a great, just great martial artist in his own way. <laughs> uh, but dude, would love to, would love to have shared the cage with him, you know? Yeah. I only see your fight with Diego going that way. Either that or the one or like Clay Guida where it's just right. Yeah. right that, that's some bonkers <laughs> shit. That, that. <laughs> Whenever people come over, I don't show them. Sure, Anderson Silva, I'll show them. I'll show the casuals Anderson Silva. But once they've gotten to appreciate, like something like, let's let's check out some of these barn burners that are also technical. I'm not trying to take away from it. I'm not saying that, but you know, it's like, oh, these are the fights, man. And and man, I, I just big fight fan, bro. What can I say? I, I try to watch as much as I can. I think you should fight for Diego. I think you should try to get that on, on your next one. Uh, I would love to see Eddie Alvarez, but uh, man. Man, you know it's 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 a road, right? You're climbing up a big ladder of big, strong. Yeah. It's not easy, man. Yeah. At the yeah, world level, too, you know, yeah. And eventually, you know, who I love, I would love to 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 run it back with uh with uh, Drew Dober at 55. So I think you know, but but uh, eventually, of course, you know, like he's he's on a he's on a tear. I and and I understand that, and I and I would love to work my way up to where we can meet again, you know the Dober fight was fantastic. It brought out a lot of good things in you, man. And it exposed how you can handle even, I mean, Dober is a guy, you look at him. I don't know how he can even make 155. His, shoulder, his shoulders and arms won't let him. It won't. It won't no. Dude, and his legs, dude. <laughs> yeah. You look at his legs. Yeah, so when I saw him at the wins, I was like, good God. Like, I even told him too. I was like, man, Drew, fuck. Don't <laughs> kick me too. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let me legs. Plays rugby. He looks like he plays rugby. That's exactly what it yeah. looks like. Oh my god! I, I agree with you. I think I think you at one fifty five. I think I think that in Dober. But again, good luck having a, a wildcat like that cut down at one fifty five. That's the unfortunate part. Yeah, yeah. So man, hey, listen, Frank, you, you've been uh, super super amazing to have. I mean, you're you're a great guy, great role model. Uh, you, you know, you spoke a lot to the hearts of the fans here. I mean, that's why we do this, and that's why I'm moved to do this podcast is because I wanna I wanna just have uh, sincere, decent conversations with with good people that train, love their craft, and especially if you come from a very what we call exotic place of the world where we don't know much about it, we get to hear your story. Um, it means the world to me, and and I I will be spreading this for all my listeners. You know, you're, you're, you're more than a fighter, but man, we love the fights too. So thank you, man. For real. Oh man. Fuck. I appreciate it, brother. I really appreciate it. And hey, dude, thanks for having me on the show, dude. I fucking no, <laughs> always. Man, thanks for the opportunity, man. Appreciate there it. You thank you. No, this, this opportunity, if you, I'm sorry, it's always going to feel more for me, but uh, stick around for one second. And when we're done here, I just want to ask you one last thing. Otherwise guys, yeah. game on, uh, you know, we're on Twitter and Instagram at game on everyone game on sports podcast check us out uh i'm danny miami here with your boy of course frank the crank camacho we didn't even talk about how you got the name but it was given to you and that uh, that much yeah. i know <laughs> dude oh you want me to you want me to cover it dude you want me to you want me okay. to explain to you how i got the crank real quick okay we'll, we'll run it thank you bro go okay so my first fight ever so my first fight ever it was it was in a dude it was in a it was like a freaking dog kennel dude so it wasn't even called MMA at the time. It was called NHB, No Holds Barred Fighting, you know? And, uh, and uh, so what happened was my, my, my coach at the time, training partner, he wanted to throw a fight in Saipan, where the island that I'm from. It's a part of the, the Mariana Island chain, right? So he wants to throw a fight, so he, he was going to rent this boxing ring. Cause we're, we're huge pride fans. Then it was like, we wanted Hell to be yeah. pride fighters, not UFC fighters, you know? And, and people from Japan, like pride fighters from Japan would always come to, uh, come to Saipan to vacation and train. So, you know, so we, we were exposed to that. We're like, Whoa, what the fuck? You guys are coming here. Whatever. Okay. Anyway. So there was this, the boxing ring fucking fell through. And because boxing was kind of like shining, like there were, there were like, they, they were huge MMA haters at the time. You know, like, what does this cage fighting stuff? You know what I mean? So anyway, so what happened was Cookie Alvarez was like, fuck it, dude. 
we're going to build this cage. So he built this freaking galvanized rectangle fence with bars across it. Dude, you got to check out my highlight reel because it's, it's, it's in my highlight reel, like my first highlight reel that I ever made. It's in there. You see like bars just going across the middle part where you're like, dude, you can like fucking break your spine, you know? And then I look for, I look it was like, for. yeah. And it was a, uh, it's called a, we call it the, he called it the rectagon. You know, it was a rectangle, but you like, got to wreck someone, you know, it was so corny. Yeah. And works. come to see how, why, well, yeah, it works how, how you, how you got my name. So he was the announcer of the event. You know, it was, it was like a small little fundraiser event. And I was, a, I was the main event, the 16 year old kid fighting on a trench tech Saipan, you know, fighting this fucking whatever wrestler guy. And he, by the, by the end of the night, he was really drunk, you know, it was kind of tipsy. So I didn't want to have like a, a, a fight name or whatever, you know, but he just mentioned or he just said like the nearest thing that sounded like that rhymed with Frank and it just happened to be Crank. And it was like, Frank, the Crank, come on. And then I was like, oh shit, okay, fuck it, whatever. That came out. And then after the fight, I won via slam. I double legged the guy and I slammed him on his head and I won. You know, I was like, oh shit, fuck, dude, that was fucking exhilarating. My first fight ever. Take down KO? Like, he hit his head, it was over? Yeah, it was over, yeah. Shit. Yeah, it was crazy. Uh, I never shot a double leg in my life, you know? <laughs> Dude, so, yeah. So, anyway, I uh, so I won, and then and then after the fight, it was like, hey, Crank, good fight, man. Hey, Crank, good job, bro, good. And then I was like, oh, shit, fucking, and then it just stuck. So, I was like, dang, Cook, thank God you, you said, you didn't say, like, Frank the Skank, you know, or something crazy, you know what I mean? Like, Oh shit! If that thing stuck with me, I would fucking hate you. Oh so, shit! Frank who stank. Here you are, bro. What's up? <laughs> like, dude. So 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 yeah. That's how I got my name, man. There's nothing, you know. There was no real crank, or I wasn't known for cranking people or whatever. But yeah, I kind of just stuck with it. You know what I mean? And <laughs> that's how I got the name. Frank the crank. It, it works, man. And and it works for me too, man. I'll take it. It's a, it's a nice story. I appreciate the extension. I didn't <laughs> I didn't expect that. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Ben, for your charisma and for your time and, and for everything you represent as a, as a martial artist, athlete, human being, thank you for sharing this time with me. I know you got a lot of cooler shit to do, so thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. <laughs> Take care, Frank. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Frank the Crank Camacho. Uh, we'll see you again for next episode from Game On Sports uh, Podcast for everyone. And this is the fight on segment. So whenever you go listen to these episodes, Frank, if ever you're mm. curious, uh, it's, it's, it's called Fight On. I do the Fight On part. Uh, got so. it. Stay tuned, guys. See you later, Frank. Later.